Let me tell you a story about a name named Basuki Cahaya Purnama. We usually call him Ahok. He was the governor of Jakarta from 2014 to 2017. When he tried to be re-elected, he lost. He received death threats, not flowers. He received protest, not support. He received two years in prison, not the position of a governor. Why? This is his story. Ahok was the first Chinese and Christian governor in Indonesia. I must say he is the game changer of Jakarta. He reduced flooding by evicting illegal housing surrounding the river by building them of very comfortable and affordable flats for them to live and widen the river. He reduced the traffic in Jakarta, which is really bad, by building MRT and LRT. He would record all his meetings and publish it to YouTube for the act of transparency. And he is against corruption, and he provides all his financial record and so much more. So why was he rejected? One day, he said a single phrase that ruined everything. I must say this phrase, uh, this phrase is quite controversial. But rather than analyzing the social context of Ahok comments, the public were quick to judge. And he said something that offended a societal group. A week after, he was on every page of the newspaper, every postings on Facebook, every tweet on Twitter with the headline of, Ahok has the intention of blaspheme, which is um, an action which disrespect another religion. Protests were everywhere, threats and controversial debate. Jakarta was heated on this argument. Ahok acknowledged his error and publicly apologized. He didn't realize that the phrase was offens offensive. He didn't mean to offend anyone. And he was sorry. But because his race and religion is a minority, people wouldn't let him go easily. Protests and debate are still continuing, you know. And in the face of this fury, as you can see, Ahok put himself into jail for two years just for the sake of stopping the conflict. And this is one example where the conflict hasn't ended. People's diversity is preventing unity. And let me ask you a single question. How can diverse societies in conflict become unified? What is society? Our perspective on society is a group of people who are continuously interacting. It is a large social group sharing the same landscape or social home with the same political authority and cultural influences. Societies are characterized by the relationships between individuals who share a distinctive or unique culture. In society, there are many people who are also different from each other, but they share an understanding that society should always be diverse and should be still remain united. What causes inequality? Greed and power. All people have rights. However, some people of high hierarchy, they only want power. They do not release their control of society. This causes inequality. Inequality can be found in many areas, such as gender, relation, and racial. Our presentation will discuss the causes of racial inequality uh, our presentation will discuss the causes of racial inequality and the possible solutions that different countries have predicting in racial inequality. Here is an example about inequality in Chinese society. As a big country, we have 56 ethnics and 55 of them are minorities. And in 
inequality is formed among different groups. For example, ethnic minorities have many advantages in taking the college sectoral examination, which is a final examination when you enter the university. The government implemented a policy that the minority people will have will be eroded by universities with a lower point than Han Chinese people. One of my junior high school classmates, his elder brother is a soldier in Xinjiang, so his own family moved to Xinjiang. Now he studies in Xinjiang. Because in Xinjiang and other minority areas, it is much easier to enter a university. Although I know the implementation will help the minority people to better develop their own culture, some Chinese Han people still feel very unfair because minority people have more rights than us. It challenges us to accept the diversity to establish a harmonious society. Perceived racial misunderstanding and inequality can escalate into social tension and conflicts, and even riots that break apart the society. 1964. That is the year where racial riots took place in my country, Singapore. This is a perfect example of how management of diversity is essential. This great tragedy had negatively affected many people in Singapore and left a deep scar on the society. The racial riots injured over 500 people, with 36 people dead. Facing such an incident, I am surprised that such violence happened in Singapore more than 50 years ago. This makes me treasure the peace and harmony we currently enjoy even more. In my opinion, the riot occurred due to the lack of mutual understanding between the different races, which caused people to be suspicious of one another and leading to that tragic incident. Taking in, into account such extreme events that negatively affect the society, it becomes even more pertinent that there be measures implemented to curb such situations from arising and also to raise people's awareness of the societal issue of inequality. An example would be the implementation of Racial Harmony Day in Singapore on 21st July annually to teach students the importance of maintaining racial and religious harmony in Singapore. This initiative also aims to let citizens and people of Singapore understand that peace and unity in society is very fragile. We need mutual understanding between one another so that society can function as a whole and not get destroyed merely due to race. In addition, the People's Association was formed with the aim of allowing people to forge friendships with one another. Community centres were set up in view of bonding residents of different races together through organising events that bond people together and foster interaction between one another. As can be seen, the government has put in place many schemes that alleviate the problem of racial inequality, which serves as a long-term solution to manage inequality in Singapore. Agreement, abuse, acceptance, restitution. These were the actions of my Pakiha, European ancestors in the history of Aotearoa, New Zealand. We entered the country with a facade of harmonious intentions, only to deceive the Māori by stealing their land and oppressing the Tangata Whenua. Pakiha created the, the Treaty of Waitangi in 1840. This treaty bound the Māori to the British Crown, promising to protect the native population. We lied. When the Māori would not sell their land for a few blankets and muskets, my ancestors attacked and killed thousands of warriors, women and innocent children. We stole their land. Not content to just take the land, we also took their mana, their honour. 
we broke up their Fano families and prevented them from speaking in their native tongue. We tried to erase their culture. Many years went by. From the 1960s, Māori began prote protesting against the influence of this oppression. These protests became violent and there were deaths. This caused my Pākehā fathers to accept that we had wronged the Māori. Kōrero discussions were entered, in, entered into by both peoples. My ancestors publicly acknowledged our abuse of the Māori. We apologised and asked for, for forgiveness from the Māori. More kōrero showed that compromise was needed from both Māori and Pākehā. We must move forward from our past rather than live in it. Some of the land was rightfully returned to the Māori. In today's society, tensions have subsided between our two cultures as we have worked to become more cohesive and understanding to become one people, accepting our differences, valuing our diversity. Let me make a clear conclusion for our team. From Brenda's story to Isabel's story, from a question being asked to a successful solution made by New Zealand government, and some of the stories that you just heard from my partners, you might, you can, you might understand that six different countries are all working hard to deal with inequality in our society. First of all, we tried to elaborate on some specific solutions to deal with inequality within our society. Like for the short term, we could launch campaigns and change laws. As for the long term, we could really root the accurate understandings in everyone's heart. But ended up finding that the issue of inequality could not be really resolved by one or two particular ways. Because it is impossible for ourselves to be everyone equal and to be the same. Imagine our lives without differences. No different races, no different genders, no different emotions, no different religions. Then how boring and terrifying our life would be. It's okay to be diverse, to be different, to even have some first misconceptions and misunderstandings of others. We don't have to always follow what the majority do, but just to be our own unique selves. There are three pillars, respectively three pillars, of what we th best think of unity and diversity. Acceptance, together, harmony. Value, differences, beautiful. We have diversity among us, but through different values, we may create a better, a more colorful and beautiful society. Through prospering this diversity, we need to be united by accepting different beautiful differences. And in order to be in harmony, to be all together. Last but not least, we think that it is really important for we youth to reflect on the, what we think about our society with diversity. Therefore, what is my perspective of diversity? It is the diversity of our own human heart to really put yourselves in other shoes, to stand in others' positions, to respect and to accept. Isn't that what we are fighting for the brighter society? As a whole, as a team, the more we think about others, the brighter the society is. Thank you. <laughs>